And now, the general weather around Alaska. Good afternoon, I am meteorologist Carrie Hazley, the Chief of the Emergency Services and Multimedia Branch for the National Weather Service Alaska Region. Today is Wednesday, July 23rd, and this is the general weather segment. We've got a lot to talk about today. Before I dive in though, a couple things. If you're looking to get a hold of us, you can always contact us through the Alaska Weather Information Line. That's an automated system with a menu system. You can click through and get to uh, your local forecast that way. You can find us on the web anytime, weather.gov backslash Alaska. And you can always reach out via email. I love to hear from folks. My email address is carrie.hazley at noaa.gov. Now I said we've got a lot to talk about, so we're going to go ahead and dive right into it. Starting off though with a look at our watch warning and advisory map, there's only a few products in effect, both of them hydro related. So the first is going to be this product up here that we see highlighted in blue. This is a, a hydrologic outlook for significant rainfall that's been ongoing across the Copper River Valley since yesterday. Um, so we're looking for a storm total of about one to three inches, depending on where you are in the Copper River Valley. The Wrangell Mountains, Chugach Mountains are the places where we're expecting the highest rainfall amounts. But the big concern here, and this is why this remains in effect, is through uh, 6 a.m. on Thursday, we could continue to see notable rises in the river levels and some of the streams in the rivers in that area. So again, that valid until 6 a.m. on Thursday, we should then start to see a lot of the rain out there taper off and see it dry out a bit after that. The other I wanted to bring attention to is, uh, let me see if I can find my point here. <laughs> so this little area here in orange down over the uh, panhandle. So this is a flood advisory that's been in effect for a few days. This is for the Chilkat River uh, around milepost 14 to 24 of the Haines Highway. Um, so near Kluquan and the uh, Chilkat River Bridge. So this one in effect again till 10 p.m. on Thursday and that due to uh, warm temperatures causing some snow melt. Um, putting excess water into the rivers and streams in that area. So there are no other uh, land-based watches, warnings, and advisories. Uh, there is a gale warning in effect for the Kennedy entrance area right through here. We've got some pretty gusty winds, which we're going to talk about as I move forward here. And then some other small craft advisories out there. Always though advise you to check out the website for the latest in terms of watches, warnings, and advisories. So one thing I did want to bring up here, we talked about the wind already. Um, being one of the, the issues for a gale warning. So we are going to see winds start to increase over the next couple of days uh, across Kodiak Island. We've got northwesterly flow really kind of setting up across the Alaska Peninsula and that's going to bring uh, potential for uh, some resuspended ash over to Kodiak Island. Sometimes we get into these patterns when there's no snow with northwesterly flow um, that will pick up ash from the 2012 eruption from Cat Vinova Erupta and bring that across and uh, impact the island there. We're looking at really the southern part of the island to be the most impacted. So communities of Karluk, Akiak, Larson Bay uh, between tonight and Thursday. And then we also see a bit of a die off and then a resurge Friday into Saturday, that potential for some resuspended ash uh, continues to exist there. So what does that wind look like on the map? Well, this is wind for tonight at the surface. So we've got pretty gusty winds uh, out of the west to northwest starting to push through uh, Kennedy Entrance, Augustine Volcano, and then down around Kodiak Island, especially the southern end of it there. And so we'll continue to see these winds build through tonight, stay up through Thursday. Here's what that looks like Thursday afternoon. They start to die off in the afternoon, but still pretty gusty uh, through the Kennedy Entrance area. We also see some pretty gusty winds around Shellacoff Strait. So again, that northwest flow has the potential to pick up the volcanic ash. This does die off a little bit and then we get back into Friday afternoon and the wind really picks back up again. So the southern part of the island again will be the place where we're most likely to see the uh, gusty winds being impactful. So, so be on the lookout for that if you're in Kodiak Island. Do minimize the amount of time that you're outdoors, especially if you're there on the west side of the island or the southwest side of the island. All right, so we've talked about hydro, <laughs> we've talked about volcanic ash, we've talked about wind, now let's talk about fire. The good news is overall the uh, weather has been less favorable for fires to uh, really kind of take off. So we've been seeing a good bit of wetting rain across southwest Alaska as we've had multiple areas of low pressure out there that have been dominating the weather. But we do have very dry fuels in Matsu, uh, Kenai Peninsula, and I'll show that on a map here in a minute where we haven't gotten a lot of rain. So there is potential there for new starts. And then uh, we do look for some cool and humid conditions to keep the interior um, in a situation where fire activity is, is a bit more subdued. So that's the latest outlook 
from our friends over at the Alaska Interagency Coordination Center, who we work with all the time on uh, fire weather information. So as far as our fuels go, again, we talked about the Kenai Peninsula. We talked about the Matsu Valley, where we've got the high to very high um, probability for starts if there is a spark. That is where the driest fuels are. A change from the map that we saw on yesterday, we also start to see some now uh, high potential across parts of the upper Yukon with fuels drying out up there as well. So that's the look at uh, fire weather. Now let's get into the rest of the weather overall picture here. So we'll move into the satellite. A uh, couple of systems that I want to point out. We've got really broad westerly flow across all of the, uh, the Bering Sea pushing its way into the western part of mainland. Some of these brighter whites here are the higher level clouds and then underneath it there's definitely a lot of lower clouds where we've been seeing a lot in the way of rain precipitation out that way. Uh, the other is a system that is lingering but slowly trying to, to die its way out. Area of low pressure down here around the Gulf of Alaska close to Yaktat that's been pushing uh, rain cloud cover down into southeast and that's been out there now uh, for the last couple of days. Um, so as far as what are we expecting to see from that? Well, both of these systems are going to persist as we go through the overnight hours. We've got that area of low pressure again out over the bearing, just kind of a broad onshore flow across a lot of western Alaska. And so we're going to continue to see rain potential out there. Area of low pressure. This one is a fairly weak system, but it is still out there. We still continue to see the front push its way towards the panhandle as we go through the overnight hours. So again, that potential for uh, clouds and rainy conditions persists through the overnight hours. Now, all of this progresses a little bit as we get into the day on Thursday. So we do see more of a push with this area of low pressure working its way onto the west coast here. Again, we'll see widespread rain out along the west coast with that. Rain's going to taper off a bit as we get over the panhandle as this area of low pressure kind of dies out as it gets closer. Uh, but it does seem to hang out around the day or around for most of the day um, as we get into the, the Thursday time frame. Now, that system dies out by Friday. Uh, come Friday afternoon, what we'll see is what was out here on the west coast, that system push its way all the way through into south central Alaska. Friday's not going to be that great of a day for the folks in south central, southern mainland in general, as we see this low work its way across the state and just kind of plow on through with a lot of moisture. So we will see a good resurge of rain in some of these areas where we were talking about drier fuels, also a resurge of rain in the panhandle where things typically taper off. And on the back side of this, we continue to see that northwesterly flow pick up. So gusty winds again over the Kodiak Island area, the Alaska Peninsula area, Kennedy entrance area, all of that sticks around through the day on Friday. All right, what happens on Saturday? It gets better for a lot of us. <laughs> so we do keep this area of low pressure. It lingers out over the bearing into the day, I'm sorry, into the Gulf of Alaska and the, the day on Saturday. It's going to be wet for the panhandle. It's going to be wet for the Gulf Coast. But those of us who are on the back side of this on Saturday in south central Alaska, uh, Kenai Peninsula, Matanuska Valley, all of southwest Alaska, you should see drying as you go through the day on Saturday. It might take some time for south central, but the overall trend is this thing scoots off to the east is going to be for a good bit of drying to occur back here behind it, high pressure building in. So that's a, a look at the overall pattern. We're going to dig into temperatures and we're going to go through these three times. I've got three uh, different map zooms. So we'll start with the southern part of the state. We'll go north and we'll go west after that. So bear with me as we slug through all these numbers. So. Starting off with south central, southern, uh, southern part of Alaska. For the uh, overnight lows, looking at what are we going to see for uh, temperatures Thursday morning. Well, we're going to be in the uh, 50s for a lot of uh, the panhandle here. And then when we get up towards uh, south central, um, we will see a lot of 50s through uh, south central Alaska, the Kenai Peninsula, Copper River Valley. You could get down to around 46, around Glen Allen, 52 in Kodiak. Warming up a bit as we get into the day on Thursday. That's good news. We should see some 60s near 70 through south central Alaska, uh, 71 in the vicinity of Seward, 66 around Homer, 69 in the Matzu Valley, and also over in the Copper River Valley. So still feeling a lot like summer. For the Panhandle folks, also into the 60s, you are going to continue to see some cloud cover down there. So it's going to keep it from getting much warmer than that, but still uh, still uh, pretty, pretty warm for this time of year. So. Into Friday morning, temperatures rebound into or drop back down into the 50s for most of the area, 48 up around Glen Allen, but otherwise generally 50s in this region. And then Friday temperatures are a little cooler because we do have that area of low pressure pushing through. We're going to see more clouds. We're going to see more rain. It's going to be a lot harder to get to 70 anywhere in South Central, but we should still get into the 60s across the entire region. Now let's go up north where it is cold. 
if you're on the Arctic coast. 34 for an overnight low tonight in New Kiagvik, 36 over in Dead Horse, Kaktovik. Uh, 42, uh, I'm sorry, 43 there in Anatovic Pass and a lot of 50s to the upper 40s across the interior. It should warm up all right though into the day on Thursday, uh, upper Yukon Valley there. Topping out right around 70 with a lot of 60s, 67 around Fairbanks, uh, 64 out towards Bettles, 50s out on the west coast for the day on Thursday. Into Friday, still stays pretty close, not quite below freezing, but awfully close up there. 33 for Udkiagvik, 35 if you get over towards the uh, eastern part of the Arctic coast, and a lot of 40s around the interior, 40s out along the west coast for Friday, uh, Friday morning low temperatures. A bit warmer for the interior on Friday. 73 be the uh, warm spot there in Fort Yukon. Get a little bit further into uh, the, the interior up there, see some more 70s, right around 70 for the uh, Fairbanks area. And then we keep our 40s up along parts of the Arctic coast. Although do note we could see uh, some places out along the northwest coast get up into the 60s. All right, now we've got one more area here. We're going to do the western part of the state. We'll start with the Aleutians, then I'll get a bit out of the way. But 50s for your overnight lows tonight, tomorrow morning, out along the Aleutians. 50s across southwest mainland as well. Warming up uh, just a few degrees, keeping it up into the uh, low 50s for uh, southwest mainland. We're going to continue to see precipitation in that area, so you're not... You're not seeing a lot of temperature swings right now this time of year, and we do keep our 50s down along the Aleutians as well. So back into the 40s for Friday morning across nearly the entire region. Uh, some places maybe sticking right around 50, and then bouncing up a bit more in terms of our high temperatures on Friday. We see some 60s on the map again, especially across southwest mainland. 63 there in Nome, and that's because we should see clearing as the low pressure that's been hanging out there forever finally moves off to, uh, to the east. So looking out longer term, what can we expect? We've got the 8 to 14 day temperature outlook up here and a lot of orange on that map. What that tells us is that the likelihood of temperatures being above normal is the greatest of all of the options here. So uh, the darker the orange, the uh, more likely it is to be above normal. Now this doesn't tell us how much above normal, just the likelihood that it will be. The only place that you see some blues on the map, we do see the potential for below normal temperatures through this period, which is July 31st to August 6th over the panhandle. Now if we look at precipitation across the state for the same time frame, we see a good signal for the possibility of some drier weather to uh, persist out along the west coast. So hopefully that's a, a bit of a welcome, welcome sign there, below normal precipitation for that area. And then out here we've got a big area of green where we would see greater likelihood of above normal precipitation for good part of eastern mainland, and then also down over the panhandle. So that's all I have for the day. Don't forget to check out your latest forecasts, weather.gov backslash Alaska, and thank you for joining us.